Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking through how to use Google Sheets to be able to plot data and how to linearize data. So maybe you are a physics or an AP physics student and you need to know something about how to linearize data. That means turn a relationship of data into a line so you can determine more about that relationship. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. It sounds more technical than it is. It actually is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. And it's a really powerful, powerful strategy because if you understand how this is done, you can understand how data is turned into an equation, which is fascinating. I mean, that's that's really what we're doing here is piecing together the different things and, and what their relationships are. So let's say we've got a data set here of the distance between the Earth and the Moon and the force due to gravity between the Earth and the Moon. So we've got this data set right here, and we want to make a graph out of this. So I'm going to go to Insert, and Google Sheets is going to call this a chart. Chart's a little more of a generic general term, so we can go ahead and do that. And if we just glance at this, this actually looks pretty good. There's not really that much more that we need to do to this. Notice that we do have a data set over here. That's, it's actually really hard to tell if that's going to be an inverse or an inverse squared relationship. So we know that the greater the distance is between the Earth and the Moon, the less the force is. That we can see. And notice that we do have the distance on our x-axis, force on our y-axis, which is what we want. All right, so that makes sense, right? The farther away the Earth and the Moon are, the less they pull on each other. And so we can deal with that. But we don't know if that's an inverse squared or an inverse relationship yet. Let's go ahead and take this same data and put it into a format that is an inverse relationship. So the way I'm going to do that is take those distances. So I'm going to say in this cell, I'm going to say equals 1 divided by, and then I'm going to click this cell over here. And if I hit return, what that's going to do is that this is now the inverse of that previous cell. If I take this and just drag this down, so notice what I'm doing. I'm dragging down that dot in the lower right corner of that cell. And the program is going to do a very intelligent thing. Notice I've got my equation up here, 1 over a10. And it just did the same thing all the way down, 1 over a12, 13, 14, and so on. So now we've got data that we can plot. And by the way, I did do a previous screencast where I went over a lot of these ideas. This is more of an application of that screencast. I'm going to put a link to that screencast in the upper right right about now. But I do want to mention that it's actually a lot easier if you get your data sets right next to each other that you're going to plot. There's less problems, it seems like, when we go to plot this kind of data in these programs, either Excel or Sheets. I don't know why that is. Honestly, it should not be a problem. What are you talking about? Well, what I'm saying is I should be able to select, say, these two columns right here and have a chart pop up that's going to be totally great. The way I did that was holding the control key, but it turns out that it's just easier in terms of setting up the graphs a lot of times, I find, if you just put the two data sets right next to each other. So we're going to make that one modification for my first video. It just avoids some of the problems. You have to mess with it less if you do that. So I'm going to go to Insert Chart over here, and notice this is what we have. So we're good here. Um, at least initially, but what do you notice that's a problem with this, with this chart right here? Any guesses? All right, well, one thing that's a problem is that our x and our y axes are flipped. We don't want the force due to gravity to be on the x axis. That's, that's a dependent variable thing. In other words, we would assume that the farther away the Earth and the Moon are, the less the force is between the Earth and the Moon. So we would assume that that force is dependent. And if the force is dependent, it needs to go on the y-axis, and if the distance is independent, which it is in this case, then that should be on the x-axis. So we need to flip our x and our y-axis. So notice I'm in the setup column. We could be in the customized column. We're going to get to the setup column. We're going to tell the program in our x-axis we want 1 over the distance between the Earth and the Moon. All right, so notice that that did not change the axis label down here. I'm going to change this. Our series, what that means is like what the y value is at these certain x value readings. So notice we're doing better. I'm going to go ahead and tell it for that y, essentially the y axis, what we want. We want the force due to gravity here. 
So notice that our data is looking better. That's what we want, but our labels are actually not correct. So the vertical axis title, what do we want here? We want the force here. So I do want the force here, and a lot of this is pretty intuitive. Like you can right click on this, um, double click even over here, the horizontal axis title, we do need to change this. And so I will go about doing that right now. All right, so now we've got a good chart that we can use. And if you look at this data, a question that you could ask, well, is this a straight line? It's a little hard to tell. You could argue there's a curve to it. You could also argue it's a straight line. If we were using laboratory data, in-class data, that would be close enough to call it a straight line. You could do a best fit line with that data set and call it a straight line. But since we're working in Google Sheets, it's really easy to be able to take that and put it into an inverse squared relationship and see what happens. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can compare the two and see which is a better fit for our data. So again, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a spreadsheet program to do calculations. This is really, really powerful actually. So I'm gonna hit equals, and then what I want is one divided by, and I'm gonna hit parentheses here, and this cell, and then I'm gonna hit shift six for an up caret in two. What I'm telling the program is, first of all, the parentheses are there for an order of operations thing. So I'm telling the program, first of all, square whatever is in that previous cell, which is A18 in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the return button right here. Now, instead of dragging down using this dot in the lower right corner, it's gonna do something intelligent, and I'm just gonna say, okay, yeah, go ahead and fill that in, and it'll do the same calculations. So let's, again, select the data. And like I said, this tends to work better if you have the data sets right next to each other, like the X and the Y values right next to each other. We're gonna go to Insert, and Chart is what we're gonna use right here. All right, so what do you notice right away about our chart? Okay, well, this chart is a bar graph, essentially. They're calling it a column chart right here, but it's a bar graph. We're not gonna work with that. We don't want that. We're gonna go to a scatter to be able to see what's going on here. And it also becomes really hard to read in terms of what's going on. It is correct. If we look at our x-axis data, we do want the distance, one over the distance squared, to be on the x-axis, and the force to be on the y-axis. But notice, we've got problems. We've got problems and what is a problem still with this chart right here? Well, one problem is we just don't have like a chart title. We don't have axes titles. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this. I just right clicked and I've got chart and axis titles. I've got a chart title here. So I can go ahead and type in what my chart title is gonna be. Okay, so again, that's a long chart title and I'm gonna put a chart title for the vertical axis over here. Remember here we would want the force and I'm going to right click on the chart again and I want chart title for the horizontal axis and that will bring me up over here. And there we go, we've got charts and what I want to talk about next is to ask the question, all right, so this was the original data over here, we plotted it. Over here, we plotted one over that original data. And then over here, we plotted one over that distance squared versus the four. So the question is, which gives us a better line? So this teal data over here with the second graph right here, or this graph over here with the purple set of data, what do you think? Well, the purple set of data gives us a line, right? And that actually describes reality. So what does that mean? That means the force due to gravity is, so that means that the force is gonna have an inverse squared relationship with the distance between the two objects. So to put it in easier terms, let's say there's a force between the Earth and the moon, and it's some value, like 10 newtons or something, just to make it easy. Well, if the distance becomes three times greater than what it was before, it's not one third of what it was, it's actually one ninth of what it was before. So that's what we mean when we say that it's an inverse squared relationship between these two concepts. And that's how scientists go about figuring out how to figure out the relationships between two different factors 
based on data. So it's actually a really powerful skill. If you have any comments or any questions down below, please let me know. I've done basically an entire year of physics screencasts as well as a bunch of screencasts for AP Physics C. Have a great day.